When you're in one of those once in a lifetime situations with your brand new Sony a6700, you wanna make sure that your photos come out sharp, that they're exposed well, that the colors and tones look good, and that you're able to navigate the camera in an extremely efficient way. And that's exactly what we're covering in today's video. I was recently back home in the Pacific Northwest in a lot of those once in a lifetime situations, and I can't wait to share with you how well the photos turned out and what's been working really well for me to get the best looking images using this new camera. Before we look at some of my favorite shots from the trip. Let's make sure we're on the same page with some basic fundamental settings. First thing we wanna do with these foundational settings is make sure that the camera is in manual mode. This is what's really gonna unlock all the settings that we can actually adjust. Most commonly, things like ISO or our shutter speed or our aperture. Additionally, a lot of the things that we're gonna cover in some future tips, we're gonna wanna make sure that we're in manual to be able to access some of those settings. As an example, if you're in auto mode and you try and change some of the settings that we wanna be using a little bit later, they might be grayed out and that's because the camera is in auto. So to get full access, make sure you're in manual. On that note, if you're just starting out and you want to be in auto because you're not comfortable using manual settings yet, that's totally cool and you're still gonna get something from the points in this video. But at some point, I encourage you to jump off the deep end, dive into manual, even if it's just for practicing, just for practicing, jump into manual and start to get used to that because you're gonna be able to get a lot better images. But I recognize that it does take some practice. Next, let's talk about how to navigate the camera extremely efficiently. And that's gonna come back to our function menu and our custom buttons. Well, those once in a lifetime situations, you gotta hit your settings quick. I mean, even if you're just taking product shots or something that's not once in a lifetime, being able to navigate the camera efficiently is really important. Okay, starting with the function menu, I'm down here in the briefcase. I'm gonna go to dial customize. No, I'm gonna go to operation customize under function menu settings. And this top one here, this is for photo, down here is for video. We're talking about photo today. And anytime you wanna change one of these, yours is gonna look different than mine, but when you start changing it, it's gonna change how these look. I can just click on the cell that I want to change. I can tap that. I can go through the menu and find the thing that I want to map there. Here Here's how I have mine set. The first thing I have is gonna be silent mode. So just being able to turn the camera from that shutter sound over to silent mode. Sometimes that's important if you need to be in a really quiet setting. Next is my autofocus tracking sensitivity. So how fast my autofocus is tracking. Next, my file format. This is when I can jump between RAW and JPEG. Interval shooting if I wanna do time lapses. Soft skin effects, not something I use super often. Some people like it the way they look. So I will have that as an option if the person I'm shooting wants that. Drive mode. This is changing everything. I'm just gonna actually go into the actual function menu here. Drive mode, this is an important one that we will touch on in just a few tips. I can change whether I'm doing continuous shooting, so fast frames per second, or single shooting, or some kind of timed shoot. Next, my last thing that I actually have set is this recognition target. This is how you're gonna be toggling between what the AI autofocus system in this A6700 is picking up as the main subject of autofocus. We have human, animal slash bird, or you can target target animal or bird for those bird photographers out there, insects, cars and trains, as well as airplanes. We also do have the ability on the touch screen on this camera to cycle those. I don't love that. There is nice that we have touch functions on here. I do use some of them, but I do like the ability just to have the manual quick switch on that as opposed to toggling through on the touch screen. And then I actually just leave these ones completely not set. Those ones below that I can't even highlight right now. I'll show you what that looks like. Maybe over here makes more sense. I have these ones just not set. Uh, that's an option you can choose in the menu at the very bottom just to leave it completely blank. Uh, I don't use them. I don't want to just put things in there to have them in there. It's confusing. So I just leave those completely, completely blank there. Okay, next on the same tab here, I'm going to go to custom key slash dial settings on the uh, photo mode, not video, but for photo. And everything that we look at here, what gets highlighted is just in the same conjunction of what it is on the actual camera. So the first thing I have this custom one button, I actually have that not set for photos. I have all, all these things set for video, but for photography, if I don't need it, I don't want to access it frequently. I don't want to have that custom button set to anything if I happen to tap it on accident. Button two, AF on, this is the button that actually says AF on. And this is the one that I'm gonna allow for back button focusing. I don't like half pressing the shutter for focus. I like holding this to tell the camera to start focusing 
before I take the shot. Number three is auto white balance lock toggle. I will save that point for a future tip coming up, a really important thing about white balance. This third button here, which happens to be custom button three, which is the trash can. And I have that set for auto white balance lock toggle. More on that shortly, but that's where I have that set. And then my center button of the wheel, I have that toggling whether I want my zebras to be on or off. So just tapping that will let me know if I have zebras. I use that for exposure, which we will spend time on in just a moment. And then tapping left on that wheel is how I choose my actual zebra levels. So I can quickly just decide if I want my zebras on or off, and then I can jump over and find what level I want them at with really quick navigation. So going into drive mode here on the right, yes, I have that as a function menu button as well. So a bit of redundancy there. Tends to be at least for me what happens if I sometimes forget that it's on the right, I know it's in my function menu, so kind of a fail safe. And this is one that I use pretty often. So I have some redundancy there. And then tapping down on the wheel is my focus area. So just choosing what type of area I want to use for my focus. After that, let's go into one of the more important ones. I have this movie button up top set to not set. I don't want, it typically comes out of box and you can set it to anything else. But again, if I don't use something on there, I don't want to have too many buttons that do something. I have it to not set and I especially don't want it set to start movie recording because when I'm in photo mode and I hit that and the camera starts recording video, uh, not a good situation. So I leave that one alone. And then uh, focus standard for my C2 button. And that's an important one. That's what's going to allow me to tap that and move my focus point really quickly. That does come out of box. That focus standard typically out of box comes out set here as the center button, which does the same thing. But again, I use my zebras incredibly often and having those two buttons next to each other to turn zebras on and then find the level. I like having that set right there, but you can do with it what is going to make the most sense for you. This is what's working well for me. If I have a lens that has a custom button on it, I leave that set to focus hold. And then lastly, my dials, I leave these out of box. The only thing that I change these two here for my aperture and shutter speed, I leave those alone. But down here, I do change my wheel to ISO. Um, that way, all I have to do to change my ISO settings is spin the wheel. And that's a lot more like most cameras that we're used to a quick ISO adjustment, as opposed to what comes in the camera of tapping right and then cycling through your different ISOs. Tip number two is all about nailing exposure. Looking at some of these photos from the trip, it was really important that I got the exposure just right. Regardless if it was an epic landscape shot or more of a portrait, I used the zebra method to make sure that I had my exposure dialed in. I'm gonna show you in the A6700 exactly how to do that. I do have these custom mapped on my custom dials, which we did talk about earlier, but here's where they live in the menu if you're curious. I'm on the uh, purple tab here for exposure. I'm down here on number seven for zebra display. Clicking here is how you can select if you want your zebras to be on or off. And then you can click here and you can choose your different zebra levels. I'll be using my custom buttons and showing you this for the remainder of this section of the video, but tapping my center button is how I turn zebra displays on or off and then tapping left, I can choose the different levels. Uh, I usually use down here in my custom ranges. I actually like using lower limit over the standard range and there's some complexity there that I will save for a future video, but I like using lower limit and then just changing the zebra values here of where the zebras are gonna start to appear on the image. But therein begs the question of like, well, what do you even set your zebra levels to? And this chart right here, which I'll provide another link down below if you wanna access that chart for free for your own copy, is gonna tell us exactly what to set the zebra levels to. This chart represents the values to expose things to on the IRE scale. So on the far right, we have 100. The benefit of that is when you're changing your zebra levels, all of the values that you're setting, whether it be 100 or you're sliding down to 90, just like on the chart or 80, just like on the chart, you're essentially telling the camera, I want to see zebras on the parts of the image that are at, in this case, at 80 or anything above. Again, it syncs up with the chart perfectly. So if you memorize this chart or download it and have access to it on a regular basis, you'll start to realize that maybe you want to expose your brightest highlights to close to 100 or maybe a skin tone to 70. This is how you do that, is using that chart in conjunction with zebras. So when I have zebras turned on and set the values that I want, all I have to do is adjust the exposure to the shot using either ISO, aperture, or shutter speed until the zebras just barely start to appear on the part of the image that I'll be focusing my exposure on. Let's call that area the subject of exposure. The zebras might also be visible in other parts of the image if it has things that are at that same value 
or higher than your subject of exposure. But just ignore those and make sure that your zebras are just barely starting to show up on the part of your subject of exposure as you raise your exposure. And once they just barely start to show up, boom, that will be your exposure. And since you're all gonna ask in the comments anyway about what lenses I use with the A6700 to get the shots that you're seeing in today's video, I'm gonna show you what they are while I tell you about today's video sponsor, which is Audio. Audio is an outstanding service to get completely copyright free music and sound effects. And they are my go-to resource for all of my YouTube videos. One of my favorite things about Audio is that it isn't stock music. It's music from real artists and I always feel really good about using them in my videos. And that sound effects library is so, so underrated. This has been such an important aspect of unleashing my creative potential and they make music licensing so easy and you don't have to worry about any copyright claims on your creative projects. They are really taking care of all the viewers of this channel by hooking y'all up with 70% off your first year. Making that first year ridiculously affordable and you can find all the details on how to get that hook up with the link down below. Thank you for sponsoring this video audio. Y'all keep doing what you're doing. I am a huge fan. And I may or may not have tried to do this sponsorship spot while doing a cold plunge in an alpine lake, but it uh, didn't go well. Legitimately frigid. We also have to deal with all these flies. These flies are coming in hot, making it real challenging. All the information, again, these flies. Oh, join me. There's too many flies. Anyways, join me on Team Audio. I think you're gonna see what I see and how great they are for all of your creative projects. Tip number three, white balance. I found that to get consistent tones in my photos, I need to get my white balance right in camera. Sure, I'm shooting in raw, and when I get these photos into post, I can manipulate the white balance pretty heavily. But like I said, I've always found the most consistent results when you get it right in camera. When I took some of these shots, I was really focused on getting the white balance right. The A6700 has a few really interesting tricks that you can do in the camera to do just that. So when it comes to a couple of the auto white balance features that the A6700 has, there's, there's two things I wanna talk about. I'm on the uh, the purple tab here, the exposure tab down here on tab five for white balance. And the second tab here, priority set and auto white balance, you actually have some options of how you want the camera to handle certain tones, mostly the whites and ambient tones of the scene. It's gonna come out of box and auto white balance standard. You can also use auto white balance ambient or what I choose, which is the auto white balance white. So when you have your camera in auto white balance, it's gonna be essentially using whatever you have set here to manipulate the tones. It's not much and it's only in certain scenes, but what I've found is that I prefer what the auto white balance white does to the tones as opposed to something like the auto white balance standard. It's a very, very small thing. Play with that, see what you like. At least for me in the tones of images that I get and that I like the most, this tends to be the best fit. And the next one is all about locking the auto white balance. So instead of having to try to decide like what white balance to use, whether you wanna go down here and adjust the actual Kelvin or try to figure out if you're in like a cloudy day or some shade or some daylight, what you can do is just keep the camera in auto. Again, I have mine set to the white, so your auto might look a little bit different, but leave it set in auto. And then you can see that the camera's in auto by that display there by saying it's in AWB. And then if you want your tones to be really consistent amongst your images, assuming that they're in the exact same scene, this is important, but give the camera a second to get the tones in the white balance of the scene. And then I said earlier that I have my C3 button, the trash can. I'm gonna tap that now and you'll see in the bottom right hand of the screen, AWB L comes up. That essentially means that I gave the camera a second to get the tones and then I locked it. So it's not gonna change the tones at all. So all the shots that I do while this is locked, it's gonna stay in what it calibrated the white balance to be. Where that's really important is if I, again, I want my tones to be consistent in the exact same scene with the exact same lighting, let the camera get the scene, lock it, and all those shots are gonna have the exact same white balance. When I go to a new scene, I'm just gonna tap my C3 button again. I'm gonna unlock it. I do it all over again. Let the camera get the tones and calibrate the white balance and then lock it off again and repeat. If you're as impressed as I am with the photos coming out of this A6700, give this video a tap on the thumbs up. And while you're down there, if you wanna see all of the future videos and tutorials that I have planned for this camera, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those.
Tip number four and five, we're blending these two together because they just complement each other so well, is autofocus and whether or not to shoot in RAW or JPEG. I was able to get the camera out for some wildlife style shots on this really cool whale watching tour. I was really happy with how these shots turned out, but to get these shots to look good and sharp, I had to make sure that the camera had the right autofocus settings. I also had to have the correct RAW settings to get the fastest burst or fastest frames per second to capture some of the action. These autofocus and RAW settings tips are really simple, but they can make a huge impact. Let's take a look at exactly what I did to get these photos. Okay, autofocus settings is really simple. I have that in my function menu and I can change my autofocus tracking speeds here. You can either have it as locked on or really responsive. I usually leave it at four, so somewhere close to responsive. This isn't gonna make a huge difference when it comes to photography, but almost always I want the autofocus tracking to be quick if I'm trying to actually track a subject. For video, it's a little bit different. We'll probably come way down here, but for photography, photography, somewhere around here is usually what I want because we're typically wanting to track some kind of fast moving subject. And even if it's not a fast moving subject, we want our autofocus tracking to be able to keep up with whatever we're doing. As an example, when I'm shooting wildlife and the whales are moving pretty quickly, I want to keep my, I'm trying to track them. I want to keep, make sure that the camera's autofocus and it's ridiculously good and this camera is keeping up and it actually performed extremely well. Next is going to be the raw over JPEG. So I'm over here, I'm going to go up to the camera and we're going to go to image quality file format and we can choose either JPEG or RAW. We can do both if you want to do that, but RAW is going to give us the ability to manipulate the images the absolute most that we possibly can. Uh, JPEG is for like quick turnaround stuff. I am 99.9% .9 of the time shooting in RAW and then the RAW file type to get the fastest frames per second. So the fastest burst rate, we wanna be in this compressed version. I haven't seen a huge difference between these two. Lossless is not gonna give us the ability to have a fast burst. It's still pretty quick, but the file sizes are a bit bigger and it is, uh, it's just a bigger file, so it can't feed the buffer nearly as quickly. So I keep this in compressed 100% of the time, but especially on this next point that I'm about to make here when we go to our drive mode, when we want the highest frames per second in RAW, which is this high plus, us, we're gonna get the fastest frames per second on our shutter when we have this in compressed RAW. So on my wildlife example earlier, a fast moving subjects, I wanted to be able to capture as, I filled up an SD card so fast, uh, but we wanted to capture as many images as possible to try to get that, that perfect shot. Then this is how I did that by using continuous shooting high, using the 11 frames per second that the A6700 does. And I made sure that the camera was not in lossless, that it was in compressed RAW. If you're in JPEG, you'll still get that really fast frames per second, but uh, we don't want to shoot JPEG. We want to be shooting in RAW. Don't forget to check out audio to take advantage of that crazy deal. I think you'll be really happy that you did. I got my Sony a6700 a few weeks ago, and I changed six settings to get the most out of the camera on day one. And if you want to make those same adjustments, make sure you check out this video, and I'll review exactly what those adjustments are. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya.